So this video is the fifth in a series of videos on differential equations, an introductory series. In this video, I'm going to talk about solving linear DEs, so moving away from qualitative methods like the slope field and phase line that I talked about in the previous two videos, jumping back to some of the equations that I described in the second video, and using the idea of phase lines to sort of motivate a way of solving these linear differential equations. So let me just remind you what these differential equations look like. So the general form of a, what we call a first order, meaning a single derivative, no second derivatives, a first order linear differential equation in general looks like this, where we have some a constant plus b times y. So we wrote down a few of these in the second video of this series. They looked like, for example, choosing b to be a negative value, we ended up with the radioactive decay model, minus by. So here I've chosen a to be 0 and b to be a negative number, so I've just swapped it, and we have minus b here where b is positive, so that the negative sign explicitly reminds you that this is a negative uh, rate. In other words, things are disappearing. And then we also had dy, oops, dy dt equal b times y. That was uh, exponential population growth came out of this one. And that's just setting a equal to 0. We also had dy dt equal a minus by. And here this is really the same as what I have up here, except I'm just going to say that b is negative. So if I wanted to write it in a more explicit um, obvious way, here I'd have a positive a minus a positive b value. But really these two are the same equation, I've just not specified in this form whether the b is plus or minus. And it doesn't really matter, the solution technique I'm going to talk about works whether b and a are positive or negative, but just for the sake of applications it's easier to explicitly put in a minus sign and say that b is positive but the formula for solving it will work exactly the same way, no matter whether it's positive or negative. And now the fourth one, this was for diffusion across a membrane. This one we had, uh, let's see, I think I called it C times Y naught minus Y. Now at first glance, this might not look like the same type of equation, but if you multiply through, you get C Y naught minus C times Y. And now we can match the pieces if we set a to be c times y naught, and we set b to be negative c, then you can see how this equation here is the same as this one here. It just requires that we have a constant here and a negative value here, which is the negative c, where c was that permeability of the membrane. Okay, so this is actually the easiest equation to think about when we're trying to come up with a method for solving. And let me, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, draw the phase line for an equation that we know how to solve. That's this one here. And the phase line for this one. And we're going to see that these are actually not so different in a sense. Okay, so what does the phase line look like for the equation dy dt equal minus b times y? So let's draw the phase line. There's the y-axis. And now over top of that, I'm going to draw the dy dt function. And this is 0 right here. And this function here is y minus b times y. That's the right-hand side. That's the slope formula. And I'm going to use that to determine what the vectors or the arrows look like along here and along here. And you can see that because when I take a y value that's negative, I have a positive slope. That means y prime is increase. Sorry, y is increasing. That means that I'm going to take arrows that do this. And above, we have y, the slope of y is negative, so y is decreasing here. And so what that tells us is that we have, at 0, we have a stable, steady state. 
and recalling back to our um, our solutions to an equation like this, we found that y of t was equal to constant e to the minus b times t. So the c value was going to be determined by where exactly we started on the y-axis. If your initial condition was at 5 or at 2, that would determine the value of c. All right, so this is both a qualitative picture and a formula that sort of work nicely together. So now that we've done that, let's look at this other example, this membrane, membrane diffusion differential equation, dy dt equal c times y naught minus y. So let's draw the phase line for this guy. We don't yet have an expression like this one for the solution to the simpler equation. We don't have one of those for this. But once we see what this phase line looks like and how it compares to the phase line for this equation, we are going to have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be. So let's draw the phase line with the y-axis here. And now I'm not too concerned where 0 is because this, the function that I want to draw above, goes through y naught at 0. So if y naught is positive, 0 might be way out here. Not a really important point. The important point now is y naught. And now if we fill in the phase line, we're going to have big arrows out here. And those arrows are going to get smaller as I get closer and bigger going in the negative direction as I go up this way. And the reason for that is that if I have a value of y below y naught, so y smaller than y naught, we have bigger number minus smaller number. That ends up being positive, which means dy dt is positive, so the slope is positive, and the function is going to be increasing. If we're above y naught, then we're going to be taking y naught and subtracting a bigger number, because we're up here. That makes this quantity in the brackets negative, so dy dt is negative, and the slope is going to be tilting down, which means the function is decreasing on this side. And that tells us that we have a stable steady state at y naught. Okay, so now if the b value in this example is exactly the same as the c value in this example, then this line has the same slope as this line, and every one of these little vectors will have the exact matching size of the vectors here if we try and put one on top of the other. The only difference between them is this one has been shifted over to y naught as the center of things. So what that means we can do is we can define a new variable. We're going to define z of t to be equal to y of t minus y naught. And what does that do? That takes this expression here and this whole picture and on the z-axis, it'll all be shifted, so this will now be 0. So if I draw, if I, first I write down the differential equation, taking the derivative of y with respect to t, from this expression here, let's actually do that by taking dz dt, that's going to be dy dt. Because y naught is a constant, it disappears. So I can replace this dy dt with dz dt. And on the other side, we have c times this quantity is exactly the negative of this thing. So what that tells me if I just write this as y naught minus y of t, that's equal to minus z of t. And so now we can rewrite the differential equation replacing dy dt by dz dt and replacing c times minus z in brackets. And this is a differential equation we know how to solve. z of t is equal to, now I've used the constant c here, it's a different 
it's a, it's a different constant than the c over here, so I have to really change my my notation. I'm going to call that a d, let's say, and that is going to be d times e to the minus c times t. That's the solution of this simple differential equation that we already knew how to solve in slightly different notation over here. So now we can go back and substitute. Well, um, from this expression up here, we can rearrange and bring the y naught over to this side. And then we can write down that y of t is equal to z of t plus y naught. So I'll rewrite that as y naught plus, and now replace z of t with the solution that we calculated, e to the minus ct. And there we have a solution y of t to the membrane passive membrane diffusion equation up here. And it was inspired by the idea of shifting based on the similarity between the two face planes. Okay, so that is for the membrane diffusion case. And now let's see if we can, without much extra work, if we can figure out how to solve the general case no matter what the a and b values are. So let's rewrite dy dt as, <clears throat> well, I want to have a y with a coefficient of, um, let's see, so uh, I'm going to rewrite this as factoring out, you see, I want to have a coefficient of 1 or minus 1 in front of the y term. So I'm going to factor out a minus b out of the brackets, and that gives me a minus a over b in place of just the a. And then here I have minus y. And so here you can see that no matter what b is, if it's a positive value or a negative value, I have the right form to match this expression up here. What is the y naught and c value? c is equal to minus b and y naught is equal to minus a over b. So if I want to just write down the solution to this, I can just write down now y of t is equal to y naught, which is minus a over b, and then plus d, some arbitrary constant that we can fix once we know an initial condition, times e to the b times t. And you can see that if b is a negative number, then this is going to decay away. So we're going to approach a steady state. What is the steady state that we approach? Well, if b is negative, then this is going to go to zero as t goes to infinity. And I'm going to be left with minus a over b. Now if a is positive and b, as we said, is negative, so this is negative exponential decay, this quantity will be a positive steady state. And if it's not, if a is negative and b is negative, then it will be a negative steady state. But as long as, so let me write this down, for b negative minus a over b is a stable steady state. And if b is positive, then we have exponential growth away from it, and it'll be unstable. But I'll just leave it at this statement for now. So this gives you a tool to solve any of the equations that we talked about in the second video, except for the logistic equation, which is not a linear equation like these ones.